Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Uh, right now is an incredibly exciting time in my life. I've got tons of things going on. Uh, so I wanted to share a little bit of that with you. So first and foremost, as I'm sure the majority of you already know since I've mentioned it in previous videos, my wife is pregnant with our first child. So he's scheduled to be here in about six weeks or so. So if he comes on time, uh, hopefully it'll be around mid-October, uh, but incredibly excited for that. That's probably the biggest thing that I have going on right now. Uh, second, it's college football season again. Um, I'm sorry if you're not a college football fan or don't like football at all. Uh, that's perfectly fine, but I'm a college football fanatic. Uh, it's actually on on the TV behind the camera right now, so if you see me sneaking a peek, uh, it's definitely not a teleprompter, it's actually just some football on TV. Uh, lastly, and what this video is about, um, we're getting ready to do our first hardline liquid cooled build. Uh, so I've got some parts here from EK that we're going to take a quick look at. Uh, we've got a mono block for one of our motherboards, as well as a GPU block uh, that will be going on our 1080 Ti in this build. Uh, so let's dive right in and take a look. We're going to start things off by taking a look at this mono block first. So this mono block is compatible with all of Gigabyte's uh, Aorus X299 boards. Uh, so this will cover everything from their budget ultra durable all the way up to the Gaming 9. Uh, so the difference between this and a regular CPU block is a CPU block is only going to cover the CPU itself. What a mono block does is incorporates the power delivery, so all of the VRM will be covered by this block. Uh, that hasn't necessarily been important, um, not in a while at least. It is again now with everything that's been going on with X299. Uh, the power delivery can get hot in certain situations, uh, so this can definitely uh, be beneficial for X299. And that's why I chose to go with it. Uh, initially, I had picked up a, uh, I believe it was a Fantex Glacier uh, CPU only block. And it's a beautiful, beautiful block. Uh, but unfortunately, it does not cover the power delivery. Uh, so went ahead and picked this one up. Right now, you can get it for about 150 bucks shipped uh, straight from EK. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So as soon as you open it, you are greeted with thermal pads. Uh, so these will probably be cut to fit. I'm going to guess that it will tell us how to do that in these instructions. Uh, so we've got thermal pads and instructions here. Looks like we've got a little bit of mounting hardware as well as some of EK's thermal paste. Uh, I believe this thermal paste is still called ectotherm. Yes, that's correct. So this is what they send out with their water blocks. Uh, moving on, we've got another section of the box that opens up. Uh, we're greeted with some foam and then the mono block in all of its glory. Let's go ahead and take it out. We'll move some of this other stuff out of the way so we can take a better look at it. So this is actually the first time that I have ever uh, used a mono block. Uh, it's quite a bit bigger than I expected, although I'm not sure what I had expected it to be since it is going to cover the CPU as well as the power delivery. Uh, we've got our two ports here, one is in, one is out. Uh, you can see the Aorus branding down here at the bottom. We also have an EK logo that's covered up uh, by a little bit of protective film. We also have this cable coming off of it, and this is actually a three pin cable. Uh, so immediately, I'm sure you're wondering, what does it need an electrical cable for? Uh, of course, just like everything else in 2017, it does have RGB lighting. Now, usually RGB lighting comes in a 4-pin variety. This block uses a 3-pin because it is designed to work with the 3-pin header on the new Aorus motherboards, and those have... Uh, addressable RGBs. So you can actually independently control each RGB on here. Uh, it allows for very good fade effects. Um, the difference is with a 4-pin, all of your LEDs are changing to the next color in unison. With this one, uh, it just allows for more granular control. Uh, so that's definitely a nice feature. Um, 
Obviously it's plexi on top, so you will be able to see the liquid going through it. Move around to the back. Uh, we've got some more retention screws. So these will actually unscrew and these will go through the, uh, the mounting holes for the socket itself. Uh, the mounting screws that we found earlier inside the bag are actually going to go here. Uh, and that just helps tighten it down around the power delivery. Um, we peel off our protective sticker and it is absolutely gorgeous underneath. So you can still see some of the marks from milling. Uh, I wouldn't consider it a perfectly smooth surface, uh, but for most of uh, most intents and purposes, it's going to be good enough. Uh, if you are incredibly enthusiastic about water cooling and you want the absolute best, I would suggest going ahead and doing some sanding on this uh, and see if you get it a little bit more flat. Uh, it's something that's going to be really hard to pick up on camera, uh, but nevertheless, still well worth the money. Uh, still very glad that I got this block. Let's go ahead and move on to the video card block. So right off the bat, uh, some of you will notice that there's something a little bit different about this GPU block. Uh, right here on the end, you can see where it says FTW3. So this is not going to be a block that you would use on a reference or Founders Edition 1080 Ti. This is actually made for EVGA's For the Win 3 card. So I'm incredibly excited to use this block. I'm very, very grateful that EK decided that the For the Win card was important enough to make a block for. Uh, there's a lot of times where companies will only stick to reference design PCBs. Uh, so I'm very, very happy that EK decided to make this block. <clears throat> Same kind of stuff going on. We've got the slide out and then uh, the orange packaging underneath. So opening this one up, uh, it's more of the same. We again have some thermal pads. These look as though some of them are already uh, cut to size. Uh, then we have the instruction manual once again, mounting hardware, some more thermal paste as well as I believe a little bit more mounting hardware. Uh, we've also got a couple of plugs as well to plug up some of the ports on the card if we're not going to use all of them. Uh, also, uh, these screws right here, I believe these are what holds the back plate on. So something a little bit different about this block. In the past, EK has never wanted you to reuse your own back plate. Uh, with this one, they are going to allow you to do that. Uh, so this model and I believe the Gaming X MSI model, those two will actually allow you to retain your factory backplate, uh, which is a huge plus, uh, especially for this For the Win 3 card because I think the backplate is gorgeous. All right, set me free. <clears throat> okay, so we've got acrylic on top. This is going to allow you to see the fluid moving through the block. Uh, again, in and out ports here. You also have in and out ports on the bottom. That's what the two plugs are for. Uh, so back around to the front side of it. EK has changed uh, the design of the front. Uh, not necessarily changed it, but if you look close, they have the normal, uh, what's called a terminal here. Uh, they've decided to put a cover over it and logo that with GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, also does have the EK logo there as well. So on the back side, again, we have a relatively smooth surface here. Uh, again, I can see the machining marks, but it is uh, incredibly flat. Uh, again, you may want to go the extra mile if you are particular about that. Uh, moving back around to the other side, you can see the channels for the fluid. Uh, it's a shame that in most cases you'll never actually get to see this side of the block. Um, it, it's just, it's gorgeous. I love the way it looks. Uh, we've got a little bit of writing down here, uh, the model number, and then again you've got the EK logo that's covered with some protective film. Before we wrap things up, I just wanted to go over in a little bit more detail what the rest of the build is going to consist of. 
So I picked up Corsair's uh, 570X case. I uh, actually got it in white. It's very close to being in shot behind me, but we'll be using that as well as a 360 rad up front, 240 up top. Both of those will be in white as well. Uh, we're also going to be using EK Waterblocks Vardar fans. Uh, I've got six of those going in this case. They are also going to be in white. Uh, so in case you didn't already know, it will be a white themed build. I'm very much looking forward to it. Make sure to get subscribed if you haven't already so you don't miss that video. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next one.